So if you flip your paper over, you will see on the back um, that there's a table at the top. Um, and we're going to fill that in because what we're looking at here are even, odd, and neither functions. Um, so if you got to this point where you had all the graphs graphed um, and you could kind of compare, you should have been able to group them into three groups. Um, so the first group are the even functions, and those would be uh, number one, uh, the x squared minus 3 is an even function. Uh, number 5, the cosine of x is an even function. And number 6 is an even function. Uh, the x to the fourth minus 3x squared. Uh, those are the three even functions. Um, so let's just look at those. The first uh, row there is uh, asking about the graph symmetry. So for those three functions, what kind of symmetry do we observe on the graph? How are they symmetric? How are those functions symmetric? Over the y-axis, okay? They are symmetric over the y-axis. If you um, were to fold your paper along the y-axis for those, then the left side of the function would lay on the right side, okay? Um, if you look at their table, what do you notice about the values in the table? Um, obviously, I chose um, opposite x values, so like negative 4 and positive 4, negative 3 and positive 3. What do you notice about those y values for those three functions? They're the same for opposite x values, okay? So in the table, you will see opposite x values have the same y value. Um, so that means for that last row, f of negative x is equal to f of positive x. f of negative x is equal to f of positive x. So that's saying the y value of negative x is the same as the y value of positive x, which is what we just observed in the table. That's just the function notation uh, form of it. Okay? Uh, so next are odd functions are number three, number four, and number eight. Three, four, and eight are the odd functions. So x times the absolute value of x, sine of x, and x cubed minus x. Uh, so those are odd functions. Uh, now, the symmetry here is a little bit harder to see because it's not like you're folding over a line or anything like that. This is what we call rotational symmetry about the origin. Okay, rotational symmetry about the origin. So what that means is if you were to put your finger on the origin and spin your paper 180 degrees, you would be looking at the same graph as the original graph. Okay, if you put your finger on the origin and flip your paper over, the graph will look the exact same as the original graph. What do you notice in those tables of 3, 4, and 8 for the opposite x values? They're opposites. Opposite x values have opposite y values. So they're the same number, but one's positive, one's negative. Now in this case, all of these, the negative x's had negative y's, but that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes that's flip-flop. The negative x's may have positive y's, so then the positive x's have negative y's. It just so happens that the examples I chose the negative x's were negative y's. Um, for the last row, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So what that's saying is that 
um, the y value of negative x is the opposite of the y value of positive x. Okay, again, it's the same thing as what we wrote in the table, it's just in function notation. You need to recognize that. Then for your neither functions, okay, uh, neither functions can have symmetry, uh, but it's not uh, the same as the even or odd. So if we look at, let's see here, what do we have left? Number two is a neither function. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven is a neither function. So if we look at number two, if we put our finger somewhere else uh, or somewhere other than at the origin, we could probably rotate that and be looking at the same function. Or on number seven, if we folded our paper along the line x equals two, we would have um, that reflective symmetry, uh, but it's not the exact same symmetry as an even or an odd function. So it can have symmetry, it's just not the same. Um, in the table, okay, obviously our y values, there's not really a pattern there. Um, it's not the same, um, no pattern usually. Or kind of, if you're looking at number seven, if you're looking at its table, you'll see that zero and four have the same y values. Okay, but zero and four are not opposite x values. Uh, so there's no true pattern in the table, and then there's not really anything for us to say for the f of negative x. Um, it could be completely different, so not really anything to put in that square down there. Okay, so let's use those properties to, um, uh, to do something here. Okay, here is part of a function. Okay, here's the right half of a function. Uh, we're given a few select values there. And it asks us to draw the rest of the function for x is less than 0. So that's saying draw the left side of this function when x is less than 0. Draw this side over here if this function were even. So we've got a couple of ways to look at this. Uh, we can look at it from the perspective of, okay, I'm looking at the graph, so if it's an even function, then it's going to be the mirror image, correct? So I'm just going to take those points um, that are on the right side, and I'm going to flip them over the axis. So I've still got the point there at the origin. Uh, I did have the point 1, 2, so that means I'm going to have the point negative 1, 2. 2, 3, so it's negative 2, 3. Uh, 3, 0, so negative 3, 0, 4, negative 5, uh, down here, and 5, negative 5, 2, and 6, 3, negative 6, positive 3. So I'm just reflecting these points over the y-axis. Or I also was calling them out, so I was kind of it was kind of like I was producing a table. I was saying opposite x values have the same y value. You're going to have a quick quiz on that table tomorrow, so you might want to learn that. Um, the properties of the symmetry, the table, uh, and the f of x, f of negative x stuff. All right, so that is if our function were an even function. Well, what if it's an odd function, okay? If it's an odd function, um, for me, the whole symmetry thing is a little bit harder to do uh, when I'm just graphing it. So I'm going to look at it from the perspective of uh, opposite x values have opposite y values. Okay, so I still start there at the origin. That point does not change. But the original point 1, 2, negative 1 is going to have the opposite y value. So negative 1 is going to have a value of negative 2. The point 2, 3, negative 2 is going to be the opposite, negative 3. The next point, 3, 0. Well, that one's easy because 0 doesn't have an opposite, so it's just negative 3, 0. 
4, negative 5. Opposite y value, so negative 4, positive 5. 5, negative 2 is going to be negative 5, positive 2. And 6, 3 is going to be negative 6, negative 3. I just changed all the y values. And then connect the dots. You can't say that I never let you draw in here. Okay, so um, let's look at another way that we can use these properties. Okay, let's just say that we're not given the function. We're just told that the function is an even function. We're told one value, and we're asked what is f of the negative value. So um, for a, f of x is even. They tell us f of 2 is 5. What is f of negative 2? What do we know about even function? Opposite x values have the same, the same y value. So f of negative 2 is 5. Okay. B. G of x is odd. G of negative 3 is 2. So what is g of positive 3? Negative 2. It's the opposite y value. Okay, now let's play with this for just a second. C, f of x is odd. f of negative 10 is negative 3. What is x when f of x is equal to positive 3? Okay, so we're just flipping around what we know. Okay, so it's an odd function. We know that opposite x values have opposite y values. Well, we have the opposite y values here. So if x for negative was negative 10 over here, what is x right here? Positive 10. Okay, x is positive 10. Okay, g of x is even. g of 5 is negative 8. What else can x be when g of x is equal to negative 8? Negative 5. Negative 5 and positive 5, if your function is, uh, if your function is even, then you will have repeated y values for opposite x values. Okay, so that's just using those properties there. Let's look at the final example. We've got to determine whether these functions are even, odd, or neither. Now, um, there are several ways you can do this. Okay, obviously we know that we can look at the graph, we can look at the symmetry, we can look at the table, we can look for opposite x values having opposite y values. I think y'all can handle those on your own, and that's fine. Uh, but I want to show you how to do that last row of that table. How can we use the function, okay, without relying upon our calculator, how can we use the function to prove whether something is even, odd, or neither? So, I'm going to look at example A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in negative x everywhere I see x. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative x everywhere I see x in that function. And I'm going to simplify. Now, the way that I'm going to simplify this is I'm using the idea that negative x is really negative 1 times x. So when I, raise, when I raise negative 1 to the 6th power, what is the result? What's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. Okay, anytime you square a negative number, you get a positive number. Well, guess what? Anytime you raise a negative number to a even power, the result is a positive number. So negative x to the 6th, is actually the same as positive x to the sixth because negative one to the sixth power is positive one. Same thing happens with negative x to the fourth. Negative one to the fourth power is positive one, so that is the same as positive x to the fourth. 